What is up guys it's the real deal welcome back to the channel guys playerium have given us one of the hardest tournaments going on right now and that is a spider turn attack tournament with champions only from dark elves so we need to do this for wukong and i think we can build a pretty good team and do this pretty quickly and get some decent rewards so Dark Elves, I don't think they have any HP burn champions. The last time I checked, which was, it was a long time ago, and Plarium are churning out champions, but I don't feel like they've got any HP burn champions. And because of that, it makes it really hard to do normal. I know some people might do like Lydia with four cold hearts, but not everyone has four cold hearts. Also, I don't feel like it's like a 100% win rate, and a team we're going to be using today is... So the first team we are going to be using, and the other thing as well, we're going to be doing hard mode as well. So that means we have a chance to get mythical gear. It is only stage one and stage two. And um, we'll do stage one just for just for the purpose of the video. And I'll show you the setup as well. So the team that we're running is Rule, Dark Hail, uh, Lydia, Mithrala, and Foley. So Lydia is going to open up with an A2 and this is going to throw out decrease uh, defense and weaken AOE. Then we've got Dark Kale coming in next. It doesn't really matter who, what the turn order, turn order is for this bit, uh, but he comes in next. He's going to throw out some poisons onto the boss. Every little bit of damage helps. Then um, Mithrala is going to come in and throw out Hex. Also increase attack as well, which is nice for the team. Means Foley and Rule are going to do more damage. Uh, Foley's then going to prioritize his A3, his big AoE hitter. And then Fru uh, Rule is going to come in with the smacks, with his A2. And that's why we need Hexes from Mithrala to make sure that this can really pop off. And it does do a huge amount of damage. Uh, basically, the other team is exactly the same, apart from we're bringing in Coldheart instead of Kale. Um, I do think that I'd rather go Dark Kale just because it's safer um, and it, it's it's it, it's the same speed run. To be honest, it's they run you, know, you get in the same times anyway. Um, Coldheart, all she's going to do is just do a big hit with her um, Heartseeker. But anyway, let's check out the run. And you are going to see some big smacks from Rule, so make sure you keep an eye out for them. But yeah, so Lydia's coming in, um, and she's also bringing Strengthen as well as Speed as well, so that's going to give us more survivability. Um, Dark Kale as well, he brings a decreased attack, which is really nice on the boss. You're going to see every time the boss hits us, it's just going to be like a little tickle. and It's really going to do nothing to us. Um, the other thing that's nice about Mithrala is she does bring a shield as well, giving us extra survivability. But as you can see, the team has done, well, the boss has done literally no damage to the team. We also get a leech uh, from Foley as well. So that is going to help keep the team alive as well. But yeah, the, the run's about a minute and 20, minute and a half. So it's pretty quick and it's not too many turns i think it's about 35 and we do get a decent amount of points for this and yeah i it's quite nice to use rule because i i hardly ever use him but um, when he does pop off as well it does do a big chunk of damage to the boss there we go look at that insane uh looking forward to seeing the numbers at the end of this run just to see how much he is actually pumping out uh, and you can see like the poisons, the poisons actually finished off the boss there, which is nice. So Rule coming in at number one with 3.3 million. And he was doing some insane damage with the A2. Um, next, Dark Kale with uh, 2.5 mil. Very, very respectable amount. And then Foley coming in at bottom um, with 2.3 million damage. And even Mithrala has done a decent amount of damage as well. Um I would love to say this is like a free to play friendly team, but it's not, you know, I am a free to play player. Um, but you know, you've got to work with the options that you have. Um, obviously this tournament is very end game focused. 
I wish Playroom would have thought about this a little bit more to include mid-game and early-game players as well. Um, but yeah, if you guys have got any other teams that are, you know, like I think Lydia is a must. Um, I feel like Dark Kale is a must. The other champions, I feel like you can mix up a little bit. But if you guys have got like any free-to-play teams or just any teams that are even faster than this as well, any speed teams for this, I'd love to know. Drop me a comment below. So let's check out the gear and masteries. And this one's going to be a little bit easier as well because we can switch it to factions. Um, I will show you the cold heart build as well. Um, the only different, all she does is just focus the um, heart seeker. All right, so we're going to start with Mithrala. And mine is in triple perception. Um, I love this build. It is great for PvE and PvE content. So as much accuracy as possible and it's pretty much impossible for someone to put any form of cc on her um, and then we've gone for a little bit of resistance as well so we've got 65k hp 3.5k defense 247 speed so pretty fast as well um gloves we've gone for defense accuracy on the chest um hp on the boots attack on the ring um that's not how you want to build her the only reason he's got it is because it's got uh, it's a reaction piece and it just helps for arena. Then we've got HP on the amulet and we've got resistance and accuracy on it. Very, very nice. And then we've got an accuracy banner as well. <laughs> Should maybe try and switch that out for a six star when I can. Um, I feel like Brimstone, like for PvE Mithrala, Brimstone is the only way to go. If you're purely using it for PvE, of course, you're going to switch it out for Polymorph. But yeah, Brimstone, great option on her. And these are the masteries that we're running. So defense tree, um, obviously just all about survive Billy, getting as many counter attacks as we can with her. And then Eagle Eye as well, just for extra accuracy. I feel like it's the only way to go. Okay, next up, we got Dark Kale. So I feel like we skipped a whole bunch of people. Yeah, we did. All right, let's go back to Foley. Sorry. Um, so Foley, of course, he's in lethal and we managed to get some crawl on him. Uh, he's not, he's, it, this isn't like a game changing build. It's an okay build. Um, we got crit damage on the gloves with subs in speed and crit rate. Chest attack percentage, uh, speed on the boots. If I could, I'd love for these be attack percentage. Attack on the ring with terrible substats, um, but it was a reaction piece and I kind of needed it. Um, then we've got a crit damage amulet and attack on the banner. Uh, the stats that you really want to care about are attack, so 4.5k attack. That's pretty low to be honest. Would like it to be more around 6k, uh, but it's the best that I can do. Um, then we've got 221 speed, um, crit cap, and then 250 crit damage. Um, Soul Reap is amazing on him and it's great for PvE content as well, not just great for PvP. But yeah, when we bump that up a little bit, we are going to get a bit more attack. Uh, Masteries, this is just very, very standard stuff for Arena. So um, Offense Tree, making sure we get that Helm Smasher. Defense Tree, making sure that we get um, counterattacks from Retribution and Deterrence as well. I love Deterrence. A lot of people sleep on this um on this uh mastery and it is it is a great one so make sure you get it then we've got lydia and this is a very very old build but still a good one so this is a hybrid build uh, we've got speed and perception we've got hp on the gloves uh, resistance on the chest speed on the boots uh, accuracy on the banner hp on the amulet and then HP on the ring. Total substats, 64k HP, 3.3, no, 3k defense, 268 speed, very, very fast. Uh, she doesn't need to be that fast for this. It's just, she's that fast for Doom Tower. Um, 436 resistance and then 391 accuracy. So that's a hybrid build for um, PVE and uh, um, PVE content as well. Blessings, we haven't got one. It's very, very difficult. There's a lot of different ways to go with her. Um, you can go Temple Chains, uh, Warden as well. Warden be quite good. 
uh, intimidating presence as well because she does have a pretty good resistance aura. And then I think either Polymorph or Brimstone are great options as well. She's one of the champions. You can, and most of the masteries are great on her. Um, sorry, most most blessings are pretty good on her. Uh, masteries we've gone for support. Um, and we're taking Sniper. Probably should have taken Master Hex to be honest. Make sure those debuffs last a little bit longer. So I would have mixed things up a little bit differently now. I would have probably taken Arcane Celerity to just help boost our turn meter. Um, and then, yeah, just sort of very standard stuff in the defense tree. Um, trying to increase our resistance a little bit on the left-hand side as well. And then going to Unshakable for that extra 50-plus resistance. And then we're going for Rule. Um, so he's in... I just built him this morning. Uh, he was naked. Um, yeah, so we've gone to some accuracy on him because he does need accuracy. Um, if you want, you could just stack um, Offense Set or Crawl or Savage, all of that good stuff. But to be honest, it was just all about getting substats on him. And gloves, we've got crit damage. Then we've got um, attack percentage on the chest, speed on the boots, um, attack on the ring, crit damage with a lot of accuracy on the amulet, and then a lovely attack banner. Uh, blessings. For PvE, I think I would probably go for Soul Reap. Um, you know, someone's bound to have Brimstone else in the team. So Soul Reap is just a great way to finish people off. And obviously, you're not going to be using him in um, PvE content. Let's just switch this up a little bit. Sorry, let's just finish it off. Uh, he does bring, yeah, we'll use Lasting Gifts. So very, very standard stuff going on the offense tree into War Masters. And for support tree, you know, a little bit of accuracy and getting cycle magic just to try and cycle back around to that A2 faster. And then lasting gifts because he does uh, bring a little bit of support in his A3. Oh, and let's just go back. We almost missed Dark Hail. What, what an absolute noob I am. So yeah, Dark Hail somewhere near the bottom there we go so dark hail um this is a build to help me solo dragon so we've got defiant and regeneration got hp on the gloves hp on the chest speed on the boots defense on the ring uh, defense on the amulet and then defense on the banner you could actually for this i feel like it's very very safe for this, you could actually probably switch him into like an offensive set, you know, put him in, you know, just build him how I built the rest of the Nukas, just stack loads of attack on him, put some crit damage in there, crit cap him, and I'm sure, you know, he'll have the survivability and he'll be able to do loads of damage. So we've got 47k HP, got 3.7k defense, 250 speed, um, and then... Uh, 261 accuracy and 210 resistance again like i said if you wanted you could, i feel like you could confidently build him as a new car crit cap him and like go for 220 above for crit damage and you will you know he'll probably do it a lot faster definitely help speed things up i've got iron wheel on him just to give him survivability for um this is to like solo con uh like dungeons and stuff so it's a very, very good mastery on him. Blessing. I keep saying masteries. I mean blessing. And um, so uh, for masteries, we've got defense tree. Uh, Psycho Revenge, if we take a big hit, it's going to increase our turn meter. Um, and we've got a bit of a strange build going on in the support tree. Um, but this is for survivability and um, just making him really, really fast to solo dungeon content. So Spirit of Haste. This is for solo content and again, oppressor. Um, so when he's soloing a boss for every debuff you've got on, it's going to increase our speed and make us super, super fast. And then last but not least, we're going to look at cold heart. And the one I was using is my super fast cold heart that I use for um, spider 10 for like a, a, like I think I've got a 15 second speed team. Oh, sorry. And she's got crit damage on the gloves. Um, HP on the chest, and we've not fully maxed this yet. Uh, then we've got speed on the boots. 
HP on the ring. Could probably actually put a little bit more crit damage on her amulet. And then we've got an attack banner. Total stats, 37k HP. Um, 251 speed. Um, she doesn't need to be crit capped. So 80 is enough for Heartseeker. That's all we care about. 238 crit damage. Um, and because of the way, because where you, you can't push back the turn meter on hard mode, she doesn't need any accuracy. Um, and I've gone for Hero Souls. So this can actually help increase damage on the boss. So very, very good blessing. And Masteries, very typical uh, build for, for a cold heart. So of course we're taking crit rate, crit damage. And we're going for flawless execution, getting that extra 20% crit damage. And Master Hexer just to extend debuffs. To be fair, because we don't have accuracy, it's not really going to help. Um, but what you can do is take Laura Steel as well, just helps you uh, reach those like little stat requirements that you need. So that is the end of the video, guys. I hope this helps you with this really, really difficult tournament. Please leave me a cheeky thumb up. Make sure you smash, smash, smash that subscribe and I'll see you all in a video soon. Peace.